video, we're going to extend the ESP8266 Blink demo to be a fun activity for students to learn more about the ESP8266, its connectivity with the Arduino IDE, as well as some fundaments of game programming. So upon loading the ESP8266 Blink demo from the Arduino IDE, we will challenge students to blink a message in Morse code by following the Morse code alphabet, which includes numbers and a few symbols, and the international Morse code protocol for the length of a dot versus the length of a dash and the respective lengths of the spaces between parts of the same letter, between letters, and between words. So let's take a look at the code that the students will start with. Uh, they will already start with an abridged, or I should say not an abridged, but an edited version of the Blink demo. Um, they actually have a functioning SOS, if you will, um, sketch. So they have an Arduino sketch that they start with. If we look at the loop function in the sketch, it identifies the letters that the blinking LED will spell out. It will spell out an S, it will spell out an O, and then it will spell out an S. And then it will repeat because this is in the loop section of the Arduino sketch. At the very beginning of this sketch, there is a little bit of setup which involves um, setting the pin mode for the LED uh, to be set to output so that we can change that. And also at the very top right over here, we declare a variable for convenience uh, to represent one time unit. In the case uh, students want to change this down the road, they can either decrease or increase the amount of time for one time unit and they won't have to change it throughout the code. Okay, let's take a look at the concepts involved in Morse code a little closer. So if we're looking in Morse code, we can see that we basically have these ideas of dots and dashes and spaces. The entire language can be conveyed uh, via an understanding of these fundamental parts of dot, dash, and space. So we reflect that same organization, that same structure, if you will, in the code. So if we look in the code, we will see functions that define dot, dash, and space. We are going to define a dot as turning the LED on for one time unit. We're going to define a dash as turning the LED on for three time units. Now notice that we're turning the LED on by writing it to low by digitally writing it to low, and that's because with the ESP8266, it has an active low logic. So in terms of these LEDs uh, and these pins in general, um, they are active low, which is different from, for example, if you came from using an Arduino Uno, they are active high. Uh, ESP8266 uh, have active low state something to keep in uh, mind. Uh, we also have the concept of a space, which takes a, an argument of um, an integer argument, which will explain to the function how many milliseconds do you want to uh, have that space uh, represent? Because we're gonna have different spaces, spaces between parts of a word, spaces between, um, or spaces between parts of a letter, uh, spaces between letters, uh, and uh, spaces between words. So uh, all of those are different applications of the concept of space. So rather than having several different functions, we allow that multiplicity, if you will, or variation to occur by passing in an argument. In this case, we're calling it MS, standing for the number of milliseconds, uh, which is gonna be represented by an integer value. So we have dot, dash, and space. Now we can compose uh, letters with those. So S, O, 
S only requires two letters, an S and an O. And where do we find out how to uh, compose those? Well, if we go back to the Morse code alphabet, we can see here that the S is dot, dot, dot. So in the function S, we're saying we're going to write a dot. We're going to have a space for one time unit. And we're going to have another dot. And we're going to have a space for one time unit. Then we're going to have another dot. Now, why one time unit? Well, if we go back to the specification over here, spaces between parts of the same letter is one unit. So that's important that we're kind of trying to adhere to this uh, specification for the language. Uh, similar uh, fashion, we look at the O function, and an O is a dash, dash, dash. Again, each of those parts of the same letter are separated by one time unit of space. Now that we have defined S and O, we can now actually go to our repeating loop, which is going to spell out S, O, S. Between letters, now we have three time units. So if we look at the specification, between letters is three units. And then at the end of the word, S, O, S, if you will, uh, we have a separation of seven time units. And we look at the specification over here, it's the space between words is seven time units. So with this basic pattern, students can then go into the Morse code alphabet. They can compose their own letter functions. Once they've composed, composed their own letter functions, then they can spell out a word in the loop. If they want to take it further, they can compose functions that will do entire words and then maybe compose an entire sentence in the loop. Let the students take it as far as they can and where they would like to. The idea here is to give them time to get familiar with the Arduino IDE, get familiar with some of the code necessary to control the ESP8266, and to just challenge themselves uh, in, in a real problem-solving scenario.